Good morning, good day, and good evening to all our attendees joining us for today's latest Data Science Central webinar. I would like to first of all thank Mark Logic for sponsoring today's event. We're very excited to have them as a supporter of the Data Science Central community, and we are honored to have them sponsoring our event today. I would also like to take this opportunity to mention and show our appreciation for some of our other recent sponsors, including TIBCO Spotfire, Tableau, Pivotal, Hortonworks, and Splunk, to name just a few. These past webinars are available on demand at datasciencecentral.com, and if you have not had the opportunity to view them, I would encourage you to take a look as they do provide some useful insight into our industry specific to the topics discussed. Today's webinar is entitled Analytics, NoSQL, and Visualization. Before we begin, I'd like to briefly review the format of today's webinar. Today's event will be one hour long. We have two panelists that I'll introduce to all of you in just a moment. We should have approximately 15 minutes for a Q&A following the presentations. And as always, this event is being taped and will be made available on demand in the next day or two at datasciencecentral.com. I would also like to encourage our attendees to provide questions directly to me throughout the presentations. I will be reviewing them and presenting them on your behalf with the time remaining. My name is Tim Madison. I'm one of the co-founders of Data Science Central, and I will be your host for today's event. I'm very pleased to introduce our panelists, Sarah Mazur of MarkLogic and Robert Green of Tableau Software. Sarah has over 10 years of computer engineering experience in both hardware and software. She has also been published in Women in Engineering magazine for an article on software behavioral modeling and as a patent as the co-inventor of a solid state hard drive algorithm. Robert is the director of product management at Tableau, tasked to drive product innovations that help the average business user visualize their data. He spent many years with Silicon Graphics creating large data visualization solutions, and has always been fascinated by the art of visualization and organization of large data. Welcome to you both, and thanks for being with us today. In today's webinar, we will discuss the advantages of combining the power of Tableau with the MarkLogic Enterprise NoSQL database to perform analytics against disparate data sets composed of structured, unstructured, and graph data. You will learn combining the tool sets of Tableau and MarkLogic and their capabilities will allow you to rapidly perform real-time advanced analytics to, to extract insight from unstructured information. So Sarah, I believe you're going to be going first in your presentation, so I'm going to pass the presentation to you and you can begin as soon as you are ready. Do you have it? There you go. We see it. You're good to go. Thank you, Tim. And welcome, okay. everyone, joining us today from the Data Science Central community. If you are involved in science or just working with data, you know the analytics world keeps changing with new tools and new data sources constantly evolving. Now there are unprecedented innovations that allow you to use big data and make sense of it through search, semantics, and visualization. Big, ugly data can be a challenge to the traditional BI workflow because it's so large and yet so sparse, so changing, and in so many different formats. But you've invested millions in systems to collect all this data. It doesn't make sense not to use it. Researchers now say that over 80% of the world's data is unstructured. And the total amount of data is supposed to grow 800% in the next two years. This data, because a lot of it is unstructured, requires a different way of storing and accessing the data than in previous generations. When mainframes were first developed around the 50s, the software and data were so integral to the architecture of the mainframe. Software execution time and storage were so costly that every trick in the book had to be done to write the code and data and the least amount of bits possible. And what developers ended up with was highly specific application code that could only be run on one platform. And this code and data were so 
minimized that finding experts to maintain or modify it became just too expensive. So companies like Oracle came in to take those frustrated mainframe customers and move them to platform independent solutions. But their data was still modeled in mainframe fashion with tables, rows, and columns. Remember that the first Oracle database was developed around 1977 before there were any desktop publishing applications like Microsoft Word, emails, or the internet as we know it. MarkLogic was developed to handle that newer generation of data. This can be structured data, but it might be from multiple sources that you might need to bring together quickly. It could be sparse data that may only have one entry per column over millions of rows and columns, so it just doesn't fit well in a relational database. It's just plain big, ugly data that you need to scale out on cheap commodity hardware or a platform like Hadoop. So what is MarkLogic? It's the only NoSQL database with features that you would expect in a traditional relational database. We have asset compliance, high availability, and government-grade security. We index every word and phrase, but we also index the structure of the document, geocodes and security, so you can combine all that together to get a more refined result. But it's not just a database. It's three components actually combined into one kernel is a database, it is a search engine, and it is application services that is RESTful based. We feel that a database system has to support search in the heart of the system itself because there's so much fuzziness and unstructured data. You need a greater flexibility in the way you query the data. So search needs to be really intrinsic to the database system. We want the users to leverage their data immediately. So we also expose that data directly to make the process of building big data applications faster. Well, this wouldn't be a big data discussion without mentioning the three Bs, right? Imagine, just a couple years from now, the amount and types of data that you'll have easy access to. It could be huge amounts of structured data, from RFIDs, appliances, to semi-structured emails or health records, to unstructured documents, or social media content. Much of it will probably have some sort of geocoding as well. The Mark Logic not only helps with storing and analyzing the unstructured data, but it can quickly bring in your structured data from different sources as well. And by pulling all together this information into one repository, you can answer questions in real time. Because MarkLogic is this fully transactional ACID compliant database that has these enterprise capabilities that can look and act like a relational database and appear like one to a BI tool, more and more data will be going into MarkLogic and we will be able to support the analytics challenges you face. With MarkLogic, data can be loaded as is without any data modeling. So you have the ability to search on that data immediately. Under the hood, we store data as XML documents in a highly compressed fashion. If you have to enrich the data, perform ETL, or check adherence to schema, you can do that before or after the data is loaded using our content processing framework. If you need to correlate the data from different sources, there are many ways to do that, including combining fields with uh, different element names inside, adding attributes to the data, renaming elements or applying a metadata section, to using old-fashioned lookup tables and joins. Now, the flexibility of Mark logic allows for less data modeling, easier correlations, because adding new attributes or elements to XML is trivial compared to adding a new column or new tables and joins to a data warehouse and you have more flexible search capabilities. And this significantly reduces development time and allows companies to innovate and get to market faster. Now one, oh, and another way to correlate data would be to use semantics right inside MarkLogic alongside the XML data. In this case, we mean an RDF triple store as semantics can also mean data enrichment. 
you can even take advantage of RDF right in the documents that are ingested to classify them as they're coming in and add new triples to your triple store. Now your search is more powerful because you are taking advantage of these facts as well. This will help researchers find that new insight or the needle in a haystack faster. Now once the data is loaded, you can perform analytics on the data. And MarkLogic has supported analytics for some time now. For example, facets are simply dimensions or categories in the BI world. We also have visualization widgets in the product, such as bar, line, pie charts, and maps. Because of a lot of unstructured data is textual, we have text visualization applications that show frequent co-occurrences or terms in word clouds. And in addition to the visual visualization capabilities provided through MarkLogic, you can also visualize data and perform analytics using BI tools like Tableau as well. You can create dashboards in Tableau in exactly the same way you create and run reports against a legacy database, even on unstructured data. Within Tableau, there are two main ways you can work with MarkLogic data. First, we can make it appear as if it's connected to a legacy relational database. The second way is to write your own custom SQL queries to take advantage of things like full text search, complex Boolean searches and the fact that it's a load as is database, as well as pre-filtering some of the data to keep the results set small enough for good performance. And not only will you be able to do what a legacy database does, you'll be able to do mark logic magic. With the new triple store capability, combined queries with Sparkle can drive or refine what you see in Tableau even more. And this is going to change the world of BI letting you do more sophisticated analytics on your big data using a familiar tool. One important thing to note is that this happens in real time. We connect to Tableau in real time as opposed to using extracts. Again, we help you gain insights faster and get to market quicker. So how does this work? Data stored in MarkLogic is XML and BI tools are looking for tables. Well, first let's talk about XML. There's usually some structure already in the database when it's converted to XML. For example, if you give us a, a Word doc and we understand what's in a title, a paragraph, or a footer already, and think of XML as a big family tree with parent-child relationships already defined, then usually there are some element names like mom, dad, or child, and their values like their major. If we just have a bag of words without any of these elements defined, we can handle that as well. We can perform content processing or use entity enrichment tools to pluck out this data as it's coming in or later. And every word, phrase, element, and value are indexed. And the ones we're interested in are stored in memory as range or column indexes. Then we just make those appear like a table in a BI tool. Now, difficult to model or sparse data can be shown right in Tableau. And today, Robert and I are going to show you an example using MarkMail data. MarkMail.org is a free service provided by MarkLogic. It's a repository for about 9,000 listservs on the internet. It has almost 64 million messages along with attachments. Posts to listservs or emails are a great representation of both structured and unstructured data. As the body of an email is free flowing and email attachments can be documents or images, for example. Now you can perform powerful full text searches, taking advantage of stemming and tokenization in different languages or Boolean queries, et cetera, to mine the data for research or find answers to questions. So let's see how we take this type of data and search it right from Tableau. So first, for those of you unfamiliar with XML, here's an example of a MarkMail email in XML format. Notice how rich and complex the data is. We have some obviously structured pieces, some free-flowing text, and some structured pieces that we've plucked out of this free-flowing text. MarkLogic loves this stuff. It was 
built to manage this richness and to service rich queries over it. So how do we present a view of this data that a BI tool will understand, a relational view? First, we'll focus in on some structured pieces. We have the name of the list that this was sent to, who it was from, and the subject, and some things that we pulled out of the free-flowing text. A function name, a person's name, an affiliation, and a couple of URLs. And any of those things might be useful in a report. Now we're going to focus in on just those structured pieces. The rest of the richness of the document is still there, but we're going to create a view, a relational view, that just presents those structured pieces. Now there could be any number of URLs, names, functions, affiliations in the document, and it would still work. So let's start with the list. That's the name of the mailing list that this email was sent to and from the person who sent the message. We'll come back to the other structured pieces in a moment. Now in Mark Logic, every document has a unique identifier. It's a URI. It's very similar to a primary key in a relational database. We can map this document identifier to the value of the list. We can do this for every value of list in every document in the database. And we can do the same for any piece of structure. And these look like columns. Because we know which document each value came from, we can stitch together two columns. And when we stitch together several columns, the picture looks just like a table. So now we have a view, a representation of the data that we can talk SQL to. Now what if I had some messages with many different URLs listed in the content? How would MarkLogic handle that? Well, we just add a, a new line to our table, essentially. And what if I had messages with no URLs or other structured data inside the message? This is what DBA is called sparsely populated tables. You see a lot of this with big data, with repeating values, sparsely populated cells, and so on. Is that a problem? Well, this big data messiness isn't a problem because we didn't actually create a table. That is, we didn't actually create a new structure inside of MarkLogic and copy all those values into it. We just created a view. That is, there's a way to see the data through the lens of the in-memory indexes that make it look like a table. The idea of a view is common in relational databases. With this view, you can continue to load, store, manage, and search complex structured and unstructured data as is, but you can very easily present parts of the data to a tool that understands SQL. You can query a view without writing any SQL code using drag and drop functionality in Tableau. You can also pre-filter the data returned by connecting the results of a SQL query. We can use the extension keyword match to express full text search as part of a SQL query. So this uses MarkLogic's fast, real-time full text search index that supports systeming and tokenization and complex Boolean searches. Now, make the right-hand side of the match construct a Tableau parameter, and you've got a powerful search bar inside your Tableau application. When you're working with a billion documents, you need a fast, accurate way to grab a subset of your big data. Now here's how it all can fit together. You might have Tableau on your desktop connected to MarkLogic and other application servers can show data from MarkLogic or Tableau or both. And search results could be refined with inputs from a triple store in MarkLogic. And MarkLogic could be connected to or even run inside of Hadoop HDFS to real-time some of the Hadoop data. You can have batch MapReduce jobs running on the external Hadoop data or on MarkLogic data or both at the same time. And yes, your relational databases will still have a place, especially for running specialized programs on structured data like an ERP system or payroll. So I hope I've shown you how you can use MarkLogic at your workplace for big data challenges. 
We are the only NoSQL database with enterprise capabilities like asset compliance and government-grade security that can take big data and connect it real-time to familiar tools like Tableau and use semantics to help you find that needle in a haystack faster. Now that you understand how big data and mark logic is used with Tableau, I'm going to have Robert show you how much fun it is as well. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Robert, I'm going to pass the presentation off to you. And you should have it there. There you go. Looks like you're good to go. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you, Sarah. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. I'm honored to be here today to present with Mark Logic. Sarah did an amazing job describing how Mark Logic is able to process and begin to make sense of large amounts of unstructured data. I'm going to talk about the next step about analyzing and visualizing that data. I'm sure we, we know now about the trends of big data. Sarah mentioned the three Vs. Now, these trends really can't be ignored. Unstructured data is exploding. Some call it the dark data because companies collecting it. Companies are collecting it but not using it. But I won't go into the details of how fast the data is growing or how much that data is still untapped. These are probably uh, many of the talking points many of you are familiar with. Instead, I'm going to spend a few minutes to talk about Tableau and Mark Logic, and then I'll get into a demo showing our technologies in action. To start, this presentation, this short presentation, is called The New Art of the Possible. I call it that because what you can do with Tableau and Mark Logic enables a new era of data discovery. Some might even call it uh, an art form. And for those of you who are not familiar with Tableau, we have one core mission. It's a mission we started with 10 years ago, and that is to help people see and understand their data. For the purpose of this presentation today, I'd take it a step further and say our mission is to help people see and understand their data in Mark Logic. I'll skip over the corporate slides, and what I'll talk to you about is why customers love Tableau. And there's four reasons I want to share with you. Um, and these are some of the same reasons why we can make big data reality with Mark Logic and Tableau in any organization. The first reason customers love Tableau is time. Tableau is the fastest way to see and understand your data, and Mark Logic is the fastest way to onboard, catalog, store, search, and generally consume all the unstructured data out there. And so when you take the speed of Mark Logic and the speed of Tableau and you put it together, it's truly just a great marriage of technologies. We're fast in every step along the way. All of the areas of the user experience are optimized in Tableau, from installing Tableau to accessing and analyzing your data to publishing and sharing your data, we're fast. We call it rapid fire analytics, 10 to 100 times faster than what you might be able to do otherwise. And you'll experience the speed of this uh, when we get to our demo here shortly. The second reason people love Tableau is the self-service ability. Uh, we want to make sure users are empowered to do the work they need to do when they need to do it. So how many times has this issue come up for you? Um, you know what you want, but you don't know how to get it. You get forms, you get widgets, or you get um, websites to request what you want. Um, and sometimes you get tools to go build what you want. But what Tableau does is we want to give users the answers to their questions, which is truly what they want in the end. Um, I have a few customer quotes that I'll share with you uh, as we go through this presentation. Um, this quote highlights how IT departments benefit from the use of Tableau. Tableau basically relieves these IT departments from being report generating shops by being, by making our users self-service, we create an environment where the IT folks don't have to handhold the business users. And personally, I can relate to this. Uh, I've worked in an organization, and maybe many of you on the call here probably have as well, where there's a reporting team. And they would always insist that I would fill out, fill out a long and complex reporting requirement document. And it would get reviewed probably in about two weeks. And then it would get scheduled to have the report run in about a month. And by the time I would get the data, 
it would be outdated or the report would be wrong and I'd start that process all over again. And it was really painful. I, I can't see how businesses operate nowadays without being more agile and getting to their data. And so this self-service reason, for me, it's personally why I love Tableau. The third reason customers love Tableau is about discovery. If you had access to all your data, what questions could you ask, right? What insights can you glean from looking at different visualizations of your data? If MarkLogic were to index and prepare all your unstructured data in a format that you could analyze with Tableau, I think you would actually discover a lot more insights into your data. And Tableau customers are answering these questions and more every day. We're getting through the, the brick wall of data, or the brick wall between your users and data, and giving people access to query that data directly. Here's another quote uh, from one of our customers. And the discovery of data, like what you see here in this quote, is what really gets people excited about working with Tableau. It shows how the valuable insights of the data can actually be. I mean, imagine saving this kind of money. With access to all your data, with MarkLogic, with Tableau, we help customers uncover all the hidden gems in their data and ultimately improve their bottom line. And that's what we're all here for anyways. The final reason customers love Tableau is the ability to communicate. So what good is your data if you can't share it? Tableau has a state-of-the-art no, state server platform that enables customers to share their data and essentially share their stories. And we're living in an increasingly mobile world. How many times do the decisions need to be made when you're away from your data or when you need to get input on a decision and your colleagues or your management is away? Well, Tableau helps remove those obstacles by enabling a platform to share insights and to share discoveries. This last qu customer quote I like because it really shows credibility through sharing the insights gained through analyzing data. It's important to be believed when you tell your stories, and analyzing your data is going to help you do that. So those are the four main reasons customers love Tableau. Well, there are many more. Some people say Tableau is fun. I think Sarah mentioned that earlier. Um, and some people say Tableau is easy. In fact, learning Tableau is quite simple. We put hours and hours of free training on our website for customers to view um, short video clips to learn about Tableau. Users can actually be up and running with Tableau, analyzing their data and mark logic in minutes, not hours. There are other reasons why customers love Tableau, but we don't have time to get into them all. I'm sure folks on the call here would probably like to start seeing a demo. Before we get to the demo, I'd just like to sum up that you can think of mark logic and Tableau as like having your cake and eating it too. So put simply, regardless of the source, the size, or the structure of the data, MarkLogic and Tableau can make users producti productive with big data. Through the speed of self-service discovery and communication, um, we, make easier, we, we make it easier for users to get insights to their data. The new art of the impossible is about empowering users to work with and see all their data, structured or unstructured. So now I'm going to switch to a demo and show you how Tableau and MarkLogic work together. So here I have an open Tableau, and the first thing you'll notice is Tableau connects to a wide range of data types. The first thing we're going to do here today is connect to MarkLogic through an ODBC connection. Now I've prepared um, a custom SQL statement to allow me to search through some of this data fast. And so I'm just going to copy and paste it in here to save a little time during the demo. And I'm going to insert a parameter to allow me to do some searches later. And this is going to util utilize some of those powerful search functionalities that Sarah mentioned in her uh, presentation. I'm just going to set a default value here for now. And when I hit OK, Tableau is going to give me the option to connect live to the data or import some of the data. This data we're going to look at today is about 70,000 email records from the MarkMail database that Sarah mentioned earlier. We could be looking at all of it, but for the purpose of a demo, it's just easy to, grab, easy to grab a subset of that data. When you connect live, all your data is going to stay within the database. We're just going to send a SQL to the database. They'll execute it and return results back to Tableau. But if you want to go 
offline with your data. Maybe you're going to go on a flight and you want to do some analysis. You could extract that data, import it into Tableau's Fast Data Engine, and do your analytics, and then re reconnect to your data uh, when you're connected to the Internet again. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to connect live to the data. After I establish a connection to MarkLogic, you'll notice that uh, Tableau has started to organize my data into dimensions and measures. Consider the measures to be um, data that I can aggregate or analyze with numbers, and think of the dimensions as ways to slice through that data uh, with words or categories. So when you connect to your data, you're going to start having some questions. The first thing you may want to know is where is all this data coming from in terms of geography? And as you can see, the data that we're going to look at includes some geo information. So I'm going to select country, and then I'm going to select the number of records so I can see how much of this data is coming from each country. Tableau has best practices built in, and I could easily just allow Tableau to build out a visualization for me using these two fields I've selected. Or I can come to our Show Me option, where it shows me the different visualizations that are possible. For example, I can do a bubble chart, packed bubbles, um, a tree map, even a pie chart. doesn't really look that good, though. Um, or a map. And this probably is the best view for looking at geospecific data. And as you can see, we put a circle in every country where we have data. Um, and the larger the circle being, the more data we have for that country. The U.S. looks quite large. I'm going to break this out into city here. And now you can see that we see a little bit more of granular information in our data. We can make the size of these bubbles a little larger. I like to put a quick border around these to make them stand out a little better. There. So now we have a map that shows us where all our data is coming from. I'm just going to rename this geography. And you can see how quickly we have connected to this data and started building out our visualizations. And now that I see where all this data is coming from, all these emails, I may want to look at when this information was actually sent in to these mailing lists. So I'll create another sheet. And what I'm going to do this time is look at date information. So you can see I have data here from 1997 to 2008. It's a little bit older, but it still shows um, the same type of context. And I'm going to take number of records here and see how many emails I have per year. Tableau automatically applies best practices here. We don't want to show a simple crosstab of this data. We really want to show visually um, how this data is trending. You can see 2008, we don't have a full year of information. So I'm just going to exclude it from the analysis going forward. Give us a better view of the data. Next, we might be wondering, where, what mailing lists these people are actually emailing to. So I have 70,000 emails. I know the countries they're coming from. And I know about the timeline from when those emails are sent. But I may want to know what's the most popular email list people are sending. I'm going to rename this one first to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an index of my data within Tableau to help me sort through this data when I start building a top list of email lists. So I'm going to look at the email list. I'm going to drag my index into the view as well. And the index probably looks better on this side. We really haven't indexed anything yet here with the data. Uh, I'm going to bring in a number of records. And what I really want to do is look at the, the top mailing list for each type of search term I may use. So I'm going to create a new parameter here. This will be my top N. And we'll look at the top 15 to start, but we can adjust that. We'll give ourselves a range of 1 to 100. And now I'm going to take this list and filter it by that top end I just created. Right here. So now we can sort this and we can look at the top 26, we can look at the top 8, in fact, I'm going to sort this a little bit more. 
So we'll get a descending view by the number of records. So now I have a list of, I have a view of the top email list, the top eight or the top 10, top 15, whatever we want, that people are emailing to. But as I search for this data, I want that to update based on what I'm searching for. So let's expose this parameter control we created when we connected the data and search for something else. So we'll search these documents for something like Java and we'll see how the list will start updating. So we'll always have a top whatever we want here for that list that we're searching for. So I'm going to go back and add that search term as well to some of these visualizations we just created. So you can see here in the map, if I want to search for something else, the map will start updating based on what I'm searching for. Same thing for the time series. So if I want to look for a different term, the map will update, or the time series will update. So we've created three simple visualizations, and now we want to actually see how this data relates to each other. So what we're going to do is create a simple dashboard. And just like you saw earlier, it's creating a dashboard is basically going to be drag and drop. So we can drag things like the map into the view, pick the time series, and a list here. We can make that list a little longer. So now we have a view. We've searched on a term IRIX. That was a popular operating system back around uh, 2000. Uh, we can probably bring in a more common term here. We'll bring in XML. And you can see how the data updates in the view. But if I wanted to look at what this peak here was in 2002 for XML and see how the geographies and the mailing lists update, I can actually do that here in Tableau. What I use, use my time series as a filter. And as I select a certain date, the rest of the visualizations are going to update with it. And again, we're sending these queries in real time to the MarkLogic database, to all that unstructured data, and we're getting those results back almost instantaneously. So we started with emails here as our source for what we were looking at, but we haven't actually seen those emails here yet in Tableau. So what I'm going to do is bring those emails into the view so we can actually see them. I'm going to format here quickly. So I have a web page I'm going to send a request to with my Tableau visualization. I think I've already created the URL on a different screen, so I'm just going to cut and paste it here. And now as I search through the database, through all these records, what I can do is see the actual email content update. So for example, if I wanted to look for Sun, you can see the time series updated, the map is updated, but the actual emails are over here on the right side that users can actually dive into. This is really powerful to be able to say, I can analyze my data, and I can get directly down to that source unstructured data to see what it actually was when it was created. Really cool stuff. Now, finally, I've created this visualization. We talked about the discovery and the analysis of this data, but now I want to share it with people, and this is really where Tableau is powerful. So what I can do here is publish this workbook to a server that I'm running on my laptop here. And in a few short clicks, what I'll be able to do is publish this to my Tableau server and give people access to start analyzing or visualizing this data. It's a very quick process. So now what I'm going to do is look at this data within a browser. And this is the same visualization we just created, the same functionality that we just had. So for example, if I wanted to look at a different term, we could do that, and we'll see the results update just like we saw from the desktop. Now, a really powerful thing here from Tableau Server is the ability to edit this visualization directly from the browser. So what I'm going to do is edit this visualization here just quickly to show you an example. So, for example, we're looking at um, the cities here. If I wanted to take that back and just go down to the country level again, I could easily do that. Let me publish this. And 
you could do a lot more of the, the same type of analysis we were doing on the desktop. This is just a very quick way to show you the ability to start editing this from, uh, from within the um, browser. Now you might be looking at this dashboard and, and think, hey, that's really cool. We made it very quickly. The time from connecting to the data to building this type of insight into the trends of time of this email, that's pretty cool, but it doesn't look really professional yet. And that's because I didn't spend too much time formatting it. But I did format a version of this previously, probably another 20 minutes worth of time to, to get it to what you see on the screen today. Um, and this is really just then polishing work. This is the same data you just saw, but we're just now showing you in a, in a more formatted type of way. So when you look at this dashboard, you're also going to notice there's some new content on the right side called What Else Do We Know? And this is something really cool. We've sort of saved the best for last. I'm going to search for something like Hadoop. And you'll see how the visualization updates and the new content appears. We'll explain this new content in a second, but I first wanted to take a quick pause and reflect on what we're doing. We have 70,000 email records here. Uh, they have to be email records, but they could be any unstructured or structured pieces of data. We're doing analysis on this data. We're searching through the data at lightning speed, and we're able to ask questions and answer questions of our data very quickly. Then user can actually see the data in its raw form in these emails in the middle. Um, it's where we started with. It's what MarkLogic took to index and what we've been able to run all the analysis on. And this is really cool to be able to say, I can have all this unstructured data, analyze it, visualize it, and share it with people. Um, and what you're going to see here on the right side is MarkLogic pulling some information in external from your data source. And actually, Sarah can probably explain this a lot better than I can. So what I'll do is turn the presentation back over to Sarah, and she can explain what we're seeing here on the right side. And I'll say thank you to everybody for allowing me to participate in this webinar. Okay, thank you, Robert. Sarah, do you need me to transfer the screen sharing back to you, or can you describe what's going on? Yeah, so I, I'm just going to describe what was going on in the background. So when, when Robert typed Hadoop, we're not only doing a search query on the NoSQL database with the column that you see in the middle, but we're actually doing another query, a Sparkle query, to triples that are right inside of the MarkLogic database. Now, this is a separate triple store, a separate way to index data or facts. And through using triples, we can get even more information. So we found that the real name of the project is not really Hadoop, but Apache Hadoop. And we can see a short abstract about the project, the stable releases, see the key people involved in some of the related projects. And this is just one type of an application for a triple store. Uh, it's customizing a unique experience for a viewer. So scientists or researchers could have another section that popped up to immediately give them more data about what they're searching for. And uh, publishers can customize content for viewers on the internet. And everyone can get to insights faster. So I think Robert did an awesome job showing you how easy and fun it was to work with big data and Tableau, don't you? Well, that concludes the demo part of the webcast. Uh, but Tim, do we have time for some questions? Uh, yeah, we do, absolutely. So um, during the presentation, I was taking some notes. So thank you to the audience. As always, you guys are great about providing some questions. Let me just switch the screen really quick. Um, during the Q&A portion, I'm going to leave up both uh, Sarah, excuse me one second. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. So uh, both Sarah and Robert's information is there during the Q&A session. So if you want to take it down, you can contact them directly following today's uh, webinar. Uh, so yeah, we did have some questions. And one that came in just a moment ago, since you're talking about the triple store, uh, the question is, is the triple store RDF another MarkLogic database or an external database? And then there's a part two, but I'll let you start with that. And this is actually a triple store that's being stored right inside of MarkLogic. This is um, 
uh, software that's in beta now that people, if they're interested, can join our early access program and play around with it if they like. But it's actually um, information that's stored inside a MarkLogic triple store. Okay. Uh, the uh, second part is what is the preferred way of using both uh, from the RDF store to the MarkLogic XML store or the reverse way? Well, it depends on the application that, that you have. Um, there's different ways to use triple store information. You can have it control some visuals that you see on the screen. Um, but you can also combine queries together. So you can do, uh, for those of you familiar with MarkLogic, um, XQuery and Sparkle queries combined so that you use the triple information to further refine the queries that, um, the results of the queries that you sent to the database. Okay, very good. Uh, there's been a couple of questions about semantic technology. Do either one of you want to uh, provide some details of specifically what that is? Sure, I can do that. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with semantic technology, it's, it's a way of modeling real-world facts and relationships and querying those facts and relationships to give context to a search or query. Um, in the semantics world, a fact is modeled as a triple. So it's a subject, predicate, object. So an example would be John Smith lives in London. So if we're doing a query about people who live in London, we have a fast, simple way of finding that. Now, semantics is also about relating facts to other facts. So if we have another triple, London is in England, we could infer that John lives in England. And semantics is a powerful way to organize and query facts about the world. Now we see the, the future of search as the combination of full-text search value queries and semantics queries to give a more holistic view of the world. Okay. Uh, Robert, there's a few questions that have come in asking about sort of the ease of use of Tableau. Um, and how you get started. So while it might be very familiar to, to some, but to, you know, the might not be first nature to all business users, can you provide a little bit of background of how someone gets started and what the timeline might be to become proficient? Sure. You know, the, probably the best way to give an idea for getting started in Tableau is just to use my own personal experience. Um, I started with Tableau simply by downloading a trial and connecting to an Excel spreadsheet, um, an Excel spreadsheet that actually shipped with our product. And I was blown away. It was instantly. I didn't need to know SQL. Uh, I still don't know SQL. Um, and I didn't need to know any of the um, underlying data structures or anything like that. I was able to simply drag and drop from different fields and start visualizing my data. And, you know, honestly, Truthfully, it took me about 10 minutes to get my first visualization created within Tableau. That's from after the download to the install to actually starting to look at the data. Um, really amazing how fast you can get started. We provide all the training online, free, for customers. So it's on our website. I think we have nearly 24 hours worth of training available on our website. And they're, they're built in these short video clips so that somebody could um, watch a clip on you know, connecting to data, um, connecting to Excel, um, connecting the relational data sources, etc., and then starting the analysis, the table calculations, and you can build upon your learning levels within Tableau. Um, the product is quite ex extensive in terms of what you could do with it, um, but we're built for the, the typical business user, for the, the person who just needs access to the data to make better decisions. So it's, it's built from the ground up to be really easy to use with a lot of functionality, and we provide all that training available on our website for free. Great. Um, Question just came in. Is there an inferencing engine OWL Lite or OWL DL compliant? Is the inferencing engine OWL Lite or OWL DL compliant? I'm not sure what they're asking, but do either of you? If not, we can move on. Um, we would have to um, get back to that person on the particulars, but we certainly, this is um, a triple store that understands RDF, and you can use common uh, inferencing engines with this technology such as OWL. Okay. And uh, Robert, does Tableau support Hadoop connections? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we see a lot of customers playing around more with Hadoop. 
Um, MarkLogic themselves actually sit on top of HDFS, and we support a connection there. Or we support other connections to Cloudera, MapR, these other Hadoop vendors out there, um, going through Hive or other um, other connections into the Hadoop into HDFS. Okay. Um, this other question is: uh, There's someone considering using Hadoop and Tableau for their big data. Can you explain where MarkLogic specifically fits in? I think you've touched on this, but they might need a little additional detail. Okay, I can take that. Um, many people have heard the buzz around Hadoop being the solution for big data. And we think Hadoop is great for big data, but people need to understand exactly what it is and it isn't. And a Hadoop is made up of two primary components, the HDFS file system and MapReduce functionality that is functions that distribute computations over many nodes. And Hadoop is not a database, and it really doesn't provide the capabilities for indexing data or security. Um, and it requires a fairly complex infrastructure and application code base to implement. And everything is run as a, a batch process with results that aren't really expected in real time. The so MarkLogic can use HDFS as its file system, and MapReduce jobs as they run in Hadoop, they can also process MarkLogic data at the same time. And however, MarkLogic can provide a real-time query capability for the Hadoop data that needs to be accessed in real time, along with the indexing and security features that you'd expect from an enterprise quality NoSQL database like MarkLogic. OK, very good. Uh, there's a question that uh, regarding again the semantic search. How does MarkLogic and Tableau handle the semantics of locating the XML element of interest? Uh, XPAP is highly functional, but not easily to grasp. Uh, what was the last part? Not easily to. Uh, the, 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 the person is asking. He says the XPAP is highly functional, but I guess not easily grasped. No, they're not. I guess to understand is what I guess they're trying to say. Oh, grasp! I didn't know if you yeah. said graph or grasp. Oh, sorry, so grasp. Yeah, but it's the have the the semantic part in it. Oh, I see. Um, well, MarkLogic has many different ways that you can actually build applications on. So um, you could use low-level XPath and XQuery to uh, query your XML database, but um, we also are RESTful-based applications, so you can send REST queries, and, and in addition, we have a Java API. So there's many ways to build queries on top of MarkLogic data. You're not, you're not just um, stuck using XQuery and XPath anymore. Okay. Um, Robert, there's a question about Tableau being available on a Mac native platform, and then there's a second part, is it also, uh, is there a cloud offering? Want to combine those two into one? Sure. Um, the Mac question, we we don't have a Mac build available today, but we did announce um, we will have one in the future. So it is something in development. Um, I don't have an actual date I could share with anybody, but it is something forthcoming from Tableau. And just today we launched our cloud version of Tableau Server called Tableau Online. And that's basically a service offering for customers who may not have the IT resources or the hardware or the time to set up their own Tableau server. Uh, Tableau will host it for those customers and based on a per user, per year license fee, give users the ability to start sharing their data um, in a hosted environment from Tableau. Okay, very good. Um, a similar question just in terms of uh, getting started and trying MarkLogic. Uh, Sarah, do you want to answer that question? Are there options for people to do a trial? Definitely. We have a free developer version with full functionality. So anybody can download it from developer.marklogic.com and give it a try. And this is for any development purpose, and we'll ask you to uh, renew the license about every six months or so. And um, we really encourage the whole developer community to see how easy it is to work with MarkLogic and Tableau together. OK. Uh, another question about uh, Tableau is, uh, does it connect to SAS? Robert? 
Today, no, we do not have a connection to like uh, SAS analytics, no. Okay. Uh, here's a more detailed question. When you look at data coming from different sources, does MarkLogic treat different spellings as unique instances of the word? And for example, would an uppercase XML be considered different entirely than a lowercase XML? Well, the short answer is yes, but the more exact answer would be that um, ontologies or business rules could be added to MarkLogic that could state that different spellings or even representations such as ticker symbols or abbreviations, um, that that should all be treated as one entity. Okay. Excellent. I think I'm going to let that be the, the last question. Um, so thank you both, Sarah and Robert. Uh, great presentations. Thank you to the audience. Some very good questions. And uh, you both did a very good fielding those questions. So I have a couple of quick announcements. To please mark your calendars for July 30th and our next Data Science Central webinar, Visualizing, Visualizing Big Data <coughs> at Wells Fargo, sponsored by Tableau. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, this event is being recorded and can be found on datasciencecentral.com in the video section uh, by tomorrow, so you can check it out at your convenience. Oops, my apologies. This concludes our webinar today, I'd like to thank our audience for their attendance and again their thankful, uh, thoughtful questions. I want to send a special thank you to Mark Logic for their sponsorship and our panelists Sarah Mazur and Robert Green for their insight into today's topic. My name is Tim Madison. I'm very pleased to have been your host for today's event and I look forward to seeing you all again on July 30th. Good day. <laughs>